Hi, welcome back to another episode of Coldstream Rod Shop. This episode, we're going to assemble the doors and hang the doors on the cowl. Um, the starting point for hanging the doors is actually getting the hinges set up. So the hinges as we get them, and I think even when you buy them not as seconds, they come basically as two bronze pieces. Um, sometimes you've got to trim the inside a little bit, but you've got to drill and tap your own holes. So what I've done with all the other cars, you want that line to be as straight as possible. So I just basically use a piece of threaded rod, tighten it up between the two hinges, um, and then the hinges actually just get set inside and clamped in place. So right now, the, like I said, the first step is basically to assemble the hinges first. There's, um, there are three screws that go into each hinge and it consists of a, it is a 5 16th 24 threaded screw uh, with a tiny head onto it. These are the ones that Ford, reproduction Ford ones. What I've done in the past though quite a bit is I've actually taken these machine screws with the uh, the hex hex uh, hex holes into them. I've ground them down until they're to the same size as the head on the original screws and then just taken a mini grinder and then put a slot into it so that the actual screws they'll work as a screws. But in this case here today we've got the right screws with the washers. So I'll start by probably drilling the first hole here and here and then I'm actually going to tap it right on with my tap, I'm going to tap it right on the car and then there's a big countersink that I'll put in here with this countersink tool so that this washer right there will actually fit into the hole. Um, once that's set in place then I'll do the two back holes and then I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. So we'll carry on with this. Uh, like I said there'll be a couple steps to it. Hinges, um, then we have to assemble the doors. Most of these don't have any of the holes drilled for the latches or for the handle, so I'll have to do that. I'll get that ready. And then I'll assemble the door skins on the doors and then assemble the doors on the hinges and adjust them and weld them in place. So watch along as we put the doors together and uh, the different steps. So here we are the next day. Last night I worked on the hinges and the door and I forgot to go get the camera lady. So I'm going to cover a few things here uh, with regards to the door. What I did, um, as I said before, I get a little echo going there with the door. Um, I drilled and tapped these holes for the hinges. Um, it's uh, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths 24. They're all installed now. Like I said, I clamped them and I held them in place and then drilled the holes, tapped the holes, and then chamfered them, and then put the screws in. Next thing I proceeded to do is actually put the doors together. Um, like I've said, every part that I have is seconds. So one of the things um, that we've got to do, or I had to do, was the latch mechanism, which goes in here. None of the holes were were drilled or tapped for it. Um, fortunately, the, do the holes up here for the handle, they were drilled and tapped and they're ac accessed through this hole here and, and a screwdriver. Um, and then there's this little piece here that goes between it. We'll cover that later, but the, uh, the video here now is basically um, fixing the holes up, drill on top and these holes here. I did uh, 1032 um, screws. You can do 1024. It's quite common on Fords to have 1024 threads, or even a more uncommon one is 1224. Um, I've had them that size before, but it's hard to get screws. So um, quite common to get 1032 screws. So that's what I'm using on this one. In the event that you make these holes too big, um, you can weld them back up and redrill them or put nut certs in the place like it's a little insert that you put in the hole and just gonna thread a hole into it. Over behind the camera lady here, I'm getting ready to put another one of the door skins on. Um, 
I don't know how long she'll stay here with the noise, but this door skin here, the inner door skin, um, over here where the uh, latch mechanism um, gets drilled and tapped. The reason why it was second because they put the reinforcing pieces on the outside. So I had to clean, basically clean those off, weld them up, and put like little metal reinforcing plates from behind and then drill and tap those same holes for the latch mechanism. The other thing you have to do is the inner door skins, when they fit inside of the outer door skin, you've got to trim them where they laser weld them or laser cut them so that they fit in there nice. Then in order to put the skin on, it's really straightforward. Um, you got to position the inner door skin inside, um, put a set of vice grips uh, up top here to hold it and there, and on each one of these corners, put another set of vice grips on. Um, like I said, I'll do some of this with the camera lady here, but it's quite loud. Um, the other thing I like to do is just clean my hammers. Um, make sure the faces are as smooth as possible because whatever, if you, if you use these hammers for other things than body work, uh, which I unfortunately sometimes do, you have dents into them, that'll transfer to the metal. So this is actually a door skin handle, hammer, so I'll be using that towards the end of hammer in here. But to start everything off, what I'm gonna do is you basically start and you don't hammer the whole thing all the way. So it's just, you're just gonna bring it a little bit all the way around. Your vice grips might pop off from the whacking, but you just have to put them back on again. I said, don't try and do the whole thing. Just work your way around slowly, um, all the way around a little bit at a time. Nope, there goes one more step. Not a brand name vice grip, so it pops off. So again, I'm just gonna repeat this and I'm gonna keep on going all the way around um, until So up here, I'm starting to roll it. A little further. I'll keep doing that. I'll keep going. So I guess for the purposes of the video, so at some point I'm going to have that rolled over more and then I'm going to use the uh, I'll put a dolly in behind it. Somewhere I had a dolly. Um, there we go. So I'm going to keep rolling that, and then what will happen, I'll put the dolly in behind it, and I'll slowly work my way around several passes. The uh, that's what the door skinning hammer is for because you can actually come in here and you can come straight down onto it as opposed to interfering. So I'm going to carry on with that. Um, 
work my way around. You can see over on the other door here, it's, it's all hammered over. Now what some people will do is they'll actually put a little tack weld at intervals here so that the so that the door doesn't move because sometimes you can't really put too much pressure when you roll that edge over to hold the inner and the outer door skin on. Um, our 32 over there, we just put a spot weld every six inches all the way around. Once, once the door alignment is good, um, and you're happy with it, then go back and then basically tack weld it in place. So I'm going to carry on with that. I'll put the other door in the other side and uh, we'll check back with you later. So here we are. We should have inserted a little time-lapse video of me drilling and tapping these holes for the hinges. Um, after I did that, I fit the doors and come to find out I had second seconds and the door was actually sitting too low. So I had to take the hinges back out and then weld the holes back up. Um, now, if you're going to weld the holes back up, it usually puts a blob on the back. So what I had to do was take a piece of, I've got a heavy piece of copper here. I inserted that in behind and then I welded the holes up and then ground them smooth. Then basically moved my hinges another quarter of an inch up. Um, and again, I've done five. This is the fifth 32 I've done put together this way. Um, first one that I ever had the hinges actually the holes sit too low and the doors wouldn't shut. Um, anyways, it's it is what it is. You've got to make a mistake, recover from it, find a way to fix it. Um, like I said, probably a lot of you know already that uh, weld won't stick to a piece of copper. That's probably worth quite a bit of money right now, but essentially put that behind where you're welding, and then it'll be smooth on the back of the weld. And again, I just re-drilled the holes. Right now, what I'm doing is actually fitting these doors. So these doors I put on, um, and then I move them up and down and in and out. And right here, if the camera lady would zoom in, what I did, I used a, uh, I positioned them and I marked them outside 
then I clamped them in place and then I just drilled and just stuck this little rivet uh, like in the hole right there. There's one on the bottom. Um, just to position it so that I can then drill and tap the holes. So right now what I'm doing is I am drilling and tapping the holes. I've got um, four of the holes drilled. I've got one screw in. Um, the screws we're using, we're making do with what we've got. So what I'm doing is uh, I don't have the exact screws but I've got these super long ones that I happen to pick up that have got the right head on them. So I'm just going to cut them off, chamfer them, um, and I, I leave a bolt on it so that I can back the screw out and then that way the thread on the end when I cut them off will thread back in. And then I rerun, I chamfer this tip and I just run it through a tap uh, or a die here on the bench. To, to clean it up. So I'm going to carry on with that. I've got five more to do on this side and then I got to have to do all six on the other door here um, and then uh, we'll carry on. So here we are. I now have both of the doors um, all drilled and tapped. Uh, a few things I had to do like uh, we just a few minutes ago like I explained I've got the six screw, the three screws in each door got that sorted out and then I was at the stage where I've got to align the doors to the opening so that was a combination of clamping down here on the A pillar um, either twisting the A pillar pushing the A pillar in around essentially so that when I close the door I've got an even gap across the bottom and everything's all lined up so that's how I've got that done on both sides. The, um, there's another section in here where you kind of have to do an ugly weld to, um, there's two tabs here that are inside the door skins. They're probably riveted on the originals, but when you look at the Brookfills, they do the same. This is what we do. Basically clamp the tab once everything is in place and then weld it. It's like a little reinforcing thing for the, the door hinge. So you can see over here, same thing. Um, the, a, the A pillar right here, this reinforcing tab, I clamped it down, adjusted it forward, back, and until I got basically an alignment on the door and then tack welted everything in place. So now my A pillar is in place, the two doors are on. I just picked up the dash from, uh, from the customer there. So the dash will be on another episode. Um, as I showed you when we put the cowl in, these little pieces here that were so much fun to fit, they basically fit on the inside and there's screws that go up through here. I'll, co I'll cover the dash later. So there's two quarter panels, there's two sections of the quarter panels we have to put together. Uh, the B pillar has to be attached. There's a sill that goes across the top of here. So the first step is going to be to uh, weld the B pillar in. Um, there's a bracket here that connects this sill piece that goes across the back. Um, and then there's this piece here that's going to be mounted in there that ultimately the roof will be attached to. So I'm going to work my way doing this on these. Once this is all done, I'll show you how you put the the drip rail. The drip rail will go in here in the back, um, and I'll have to, in order to put the drip rail in, I have to semi mount the drip rail across the back, and as well as the this this panel here in order to square things up. What I'll do, like I said, what I'll do, I'll go through building both of these and then we're going to attach them to the subframe sub on the 32 Roadster body. There's a little bit of work to do on this one, like, uh, like on all the other previous parts, there's a couple of defects here. I'm going to have to make a little patch to go in here, and then it was over trimmed here as well where it goes onto the drip rail. So I'll start with welding these in place, I'll show you what I've done, I'll make the repairs here, I'll put the drip rail in and I'll do one side, then I'll do the second side, then we'll mount them on the subframe. Oh, and one thing with this one, this is going to be a challenge. I don't know if you can see it or not. 
down here, this panel, I don't know what happened at Brookville or where it was transported from. It's got a whole bunch of little dings here. So the camera lady and I are more than likely going to have to set the camera up. We are going to put this on the English wheel and I'm going to try and roll some of that stuff out. So we'll videotape that too, or we'll do our best to try and videotape it. But um, before I do this particular quarter panel, I'm going to have to fix that first. So follow along. So had a chance to get some work done here. I've welded the B pillar in place, um, the support tab, and then this reinforcing piece that goes underneath the, the back of the, uh, the seat. The uh, over here, you can see what I do is I'm going to take a drill. I think this is 3 16 Essentially, you saw the clamps in the previous picture and the clamps like here. Essentially, drill a hole and then weld the hole up. So you're drilling all the way through the sheet metal into the B pillar and weld it up. And then it's basically we're doing like a spot weld because don't have a spot weld machine here. If we did, be a whole lot easier. And then later I'm going to come along here and I'm going to address any kind of oop, raised material off the top of that. The next step is to put the drip rail on. And as I described, I had to put the, you need to put the back panel on and then position the drip rail across the center here. The drip rail on the side actually lines up right there with, with the back of this drip rail that goes under. So I'm going to do the same thing with the drip rail that goes for the, uh, the trunk lid. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the B pillar. I'm going to come along here and I'm going to drill in between the clamps, drill like a 3 16 hole there and there, spot weld it. Then I'll just keep, I'll keep going all the way along here until that's done. Um, then I will actually, oh, actually I have to drill Come along the other side here, camera lady. I'm sorry. There's um, one more piece that has to go in. I'll tell you what I got to do. So there's four holes that hold this back of the this back panel on. There's one that goes underneath the vice grip, one here, one here, and one here. There's also this supporting bracket that we have to install. It will go, once I drill the holes, the two holes line up with these. So that'll go in place. These holes here, like they're meant for spot welds, they don't get welded in until after the body's all positioned and everything's in place. Because this is another support piece for the back of the, uh, the quarter panel. So I'm going to drill these holes, get this in place, tack weld this in place, tack weld all along here. I'll show you what I'm doing and then I'll repeat the same process on the other side. Once I have both of the panels done, I'll start putting them on the subrails. I carried on with putting the rear quarter panel together. As I said, I was going to spot weld, like drill and spot weld each one of these. So I put, I think, um, a quarter inch hole, well, it's clamped drilled holes and then I dressed the holes up. There was a defect here and when the, when they cut it from Brookfield that I fixed. And then also down here in this corner, it was actually missing. So they had laser cut it off during, and that's why it was a second. So that's all repaired here. So this was all fixed up. The panel is on the support piece. Like I said, I welded it on the top. I have my holes drilled for the, the panel that goes across like I'm supposed to. This is not welded in place on purpose. That will get welded in place when the whole body is squared up. The next step to putting this on was to position it on the body. So actually I'll get the camera lady to come over the other side. There's not a whole lot of room real estate here these days. So what you do is get a basically get, get a block of wood, semi-position it in the back, it, it, when you're by yourself anyways, um, set it here, and then the B pillar is pushed in against the subframe and clamped in place. The goal is basically to start with this bottom, position it so the bottom left-hand corner here is spaced just right. Once you have that, 
this way, then you've got to work with tilting like the quarter panel up or down until you get an even gap here. Another problem to get the right gap, I mean, visually you want to get the right gap, but functionally you also have to get the right gap because of the catches here. Now when you get the catches from them, they're never finished, they're rough. So you've got to dress this side and you got to dress the back side. But at the same time, it has to fit in, a, in up against the B pillar. It can't be too tight, can't be too loose. So the gap has to be such that I can put that, mount this on the B pillar when I'm done and then the door will open and shut right. So that's one side. I've got this welded on. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to do the driver's side. And when I do the driver's side, I'm actually going to attach this back panel at the same time. So when I tilt it up, I'll be able to actually clamp it in here and aid in the assembly of the driver's side quarter panel. Hi, so I'm not going to continue in this video and doing the other uh, quarter panel. The main reason is I've realized that uh, I have to fit the subrail extensions in, but I also need a bunch of subrail extensions for the other two projects we have next to us. They don't have them. So I'm going to make a separate video on making these subrails. Um, flying everywhere. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make a bunch of these subrail extensions left and right for the five windows plus another project we have. So that's the end of this video right now. Um, we'll carry on with a video on the subrail extensions and then we will put the other quarter panel together for the 32 Roadster. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, follow on for the next videos. Plenty more to come. Thanks.